Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here. You are here with the Tree Sisters team and some special surprise guests, which we'll be introducing to you later on in the call. Um, first of all, I just want to really warmly welcome you all and thank you so much for um, spending your time with us today. I want to make sure that everyone um, is able to communicate with us through the chat. So please type in the chat and say hello and say um, where you're watching from in the world. We always love to see where everyone is. And uh, we'll do a quick round of introductions here too. My name's Amrita Khalsa and I'm the Tree Sisters CEO. I'm calling in from Southern Ontario in Canada and um, over to Kenya. Hello, my name is Kenya and I'm the Director of Business Development here at Tree Sisters, otherwise known as the Global Expansion Goddess. And I'm in Boulder, Colorado. And I'll pass it over to Sophie. Hey everyone, I'm Sophie. I'm Communications Director here at Tree Sisters. And I'm calling in from snowy Sheffield in the UK today. It's great to be here with you all. Jocelyn. Hello, my name is Jocelyn and I'm calling in from New York City and I'm our director of philanthropy and tend to the uh, beautiful soul of our giving tree here at, at Tree Sisters. Beautiful, thank you. And as I said, we have four surprise guests joining us from our global Tree Sisters um, sisterhood today. So you'll get to meet those surprise guests later on through the call. And um, I want to just give you a, an overview of where we're going to be going together today. So we have uh, both an in-breath and an out-breath offering for you today, and they're both going to be extremely nourishing. In the first half of the call, we're going to be doing a guided um, meditation from Sophie, bringing us through the landscapes of our reforestation projects. And we're also going to do a little bit of journaling with some feminine nature-based leadership questions. So um, please make sure you have a pen and paper nearby, or if you happen to be in some place where you can't write down, that's okay. You can just um, reflect on the questions. We will be asking you to share your answers and we'll be reading out some of them. So um, we'll welcome you to type in and really be interactive with us the whole time. We're gonna have space at the end of this call for Q and A as well. So. Uh, please share your comments and your questions as we go. And um, after we do the inner journeying and um, journaling, we're going to go into some storytelling with our special guests where you'll get to hear about the different facets in the global ecosystem of our work and really feel yourself a part of this movement. And our intention for this call is that we're, we're coming together as a global circle to envision a world where nature is treated as sacred. And we're wrapping our arms together around this world in reverence for life. So thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to pass it over to Sophie. Thank you so much. Wow, so here we are at the end of our journey to a billion trees campaign which of course is just the beginning of our billion trees campaign which is going to take us all the way to actually planting a billion green leafy trees on this earth and we felt like a beautiful way to to close this incredible journey that we've been on would be to gather together in circle as a global circle of, of tree sisterhood and to begin with an in-breath offering where we'll go back into the Bedouin tent that we've all been journeying into with Claire throughout the inner journey throughout this campaign. And inside the tent, begin to vision the world that we're all longing for, that we're all longing to see, the green leafy world where, where nature is seen and treated as sacred. Um, and I want you to, I want to let you know that Claire is totally with us in spirit. I know Claire has been guiding you on the, in these meditations and through this journey the whole way. And uh, she's having some much needed rest right now, which is wonderful, <laughs> but she's right here with us um, and she'll be in this meditation with us. So I think it's time to enter the tent. So I invite you all to make yourselves as cozy and comfy as you possibly can be for the next 10 minutes. 
And once you've found a way for your body to be comfortable, you might need to adjust your posture a little bit, get another cushion. And once you're ready, you can start to gently close your eyes or lower your gaze. And I invite you to bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly, your lower belly, your womb space, if you have two hands free. And take a couple of breaths to feel how your breath is, your breath is dancing through your body in this moment. Call to mind the circle of hundreds of women of tree sisters and tree brothers too, who are gathered here in this circle with us. With this shared intention to envision a world where nature is treated as sacred. And now inside in your inner vision, I invite you to imagine the Bedouin tent that we've been gathering in for our meditations throughout the inner journey in this Journey to a Billion Trees campaign. And when you're ready to step into this tent, and go and find yourself a cozy spot to lay down and rest, to feel your body against the earth. To begin to feel yourself as part of this earth, totally interconnected. And now as you feel yourself settling into this Bedouin tent, surrounded by your sisters and brothers on this journey, I invite you to call to mind your favorite place in nature. So this could be a local park where you have your favorite tree or your garden or some wild place in the wilderness that you visited. Imagine what you could see and what you could smell in this place. If you could reach out your hands, what it would feel like to touch the textures around you. Notice how you feel in this place. Held and nurtured by nature's embrace. And see if you can really drink it in, really drink in the nourishment that's here for you. And now I'm going to invite you to join me on a journey as we travel around this globe and visit some of the trees that we are planting together as a circle of sisterhood. So I'd like you to imagine yourself rising up from this spot in nature as if you're a bird rising up, up, up. So you get an eagle eye view. And imagine yourself traveling all the way to the mangrove forests of Madagascar where our trees are literally cleansing the ocean and providing a nursery for fish and sea life. And then traveling inland to the dry deciduous forests of Madagascar, where the trees that we're planting are gonna to grow to become habitat for endangered lemurs. And as you visit these trees, you might like to imagine pouring your love on them so that they may thrive and that all the life that depends on them may thrive.
and then we'll travel inland now to Cameroon, to the forests where there are only 300 remaining gorillas. And the trees that we're planting here in these forests will help to create habitat for these endangered gorillas so that they can thrive again. Maybe imagine yourself sitting with these gorillas. And then we'll continue this journey to visit the trees that we're planting on the hillsides of Mount Kenya. The trees are replenishing the land. bringing the rains, helping the lands to thrive and the people who live around them to thrive. And then let's travel across to India, to the farmlands of Southern India, where the trees that we're planting are helping to restore farmlands helping to call back the monsoons. Sending your love to these trees, to this land. And then we'll travel up, up, up to the cloud forests in India. And let's imagine the trees that we're planting there thriving green, leafy, full of life, creating life everywhere they grow. And then finally across to the forests that we're replenishing in Nepal. Imagine, imagining the life that is growing in the branches of these trees. And then I invite you to, again, rise up, 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 above this earth. And in your mind's eye, start to see all of the forests of the world thriving. And the rivers that run through them clean, the water clean, the rivers thriving. And then include in your awareness our oceans, our precious oceans, so full of life. Seeing them clean and clear and thriving. And then for a few rounds of breath, let your imagination run free. As you envision this world, this natural world thriving and held sacred in the hearts of all who are tending to it. What does a thriving natural world look like to you in this moment? And let's take three conscious breaths together as we really breathe, breathe in, drink in that vision. So when you're ready, breathing in. And then exhale. <sighs> And breathe in and fully exhale and release. <sighs> and then one more breath, just like that, breathing in. And let there be a sigh as you exhale to feel the relief of this vision. And then I invite you to bring both of your hands to your heart right now. as you take in however it feels in your body to have envisioned this earth thriving. Knowing that it's possible, it's in our hands. This is our great work to do. And in this moment, we'll close now by giving yourself 
gratitude for everything that you're doing to help to create this vision right now. Every action that you take, every moment that you give love to this earth, every, everything you do to tend to this earth. Give yourself gratitude right now. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much. So you can stay in this internal space as we begin to transition into our journaling questions. Thank you, Sophie. So I'm going to guide us through three journaling questions. We're going to have two minutes for each one. And at the end of the journaling questions, we'll invite you to share on the chat. Um, and Jocelyn will read out some of your answers so you get to hear each other. So the first journaling question is, in what kind of nature do you feel most like yourself and why? I'll say it one more time. In what kind of nature do you feel most like yourself and why? Two minutes. And the second question is, what do you see happening to the natural world that most breaks your heart? What do you see happening to the natural world that most breaks your heart?
And the third question is, what is my personal role in planetary healing? What is my personal role in planetary healing? Thank you. <clears throat> so I invite you all to share your answers in the chat and I'm going to pass it over to Jocelyn um, to read some of what's coming in. Are you getting them here on the Zoom chat, Jocelyn? No, I see one. One about loving to be in the marshy. In the marsh, yeah. Yeah, well, we could start out by welcoming um, those of you who wrote in from Sacramento, California and Sabrina oh, from go. London. Mm -hmm. Terry from CSU East Bay, Vanessa from France, Ruthie from the Yaki Watershed, and um, Shakina, who has said, thank you for one of the most beautiful meditations I've ever experienced. Uh, thank you, Shakina. And I agree, that was gorgeous. Ooh, and I have Ruth, a water carrier at Tree Sisters, a woman of waters, oceans, rivers, streams, estuaries. And uh, she was, she has a deep connection to Yellowstone Park. And yeah. So can, Jocelyn, can you read us what, we, what Ruthie wrote there? Mm -hmm. So I'm a, wom a woman of the waters, oceans, rivers, streams, estuaries, and where these meet the land are places of deep, this is so beautiful, Ruth, deep refuge, comfort, and grace for me. In this life, I was a newborn wee baby woman in the wilderness of Yellowstone Park. The geothermal waters and prismatic colors of this land's 
geology so nurtures me. We do not notice how much nature loves us, becomes us, and is us. Nature is incredibly patient, stunningly intelligent, and the two-legged have forgotten her truth, her songs, and her beauty. We have the opportunity to connect in each moment, yet we choose away. And this breaks my heart wide open. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. And please forgive me, which is the Honopono prayer. I'm here to become whole and wise, divine, responsive, and one with nature. As I heal and I grow into wholeness, I do this on behalf of all beings with deep humility and gratitude. Aho. And so it is. Oh, and here's another one from Jeanette in Missoula. Oh, I love Missoula in Montana. I feel like my, myself in the forest, usually near water, in the peace and tranquility among the birds and trees where nature speaks to me. And let's see, Shakina. Right, yeah, nuclear poisoning is what, what most breaks my heart, for sure. Yeah. Oh, here and here's one more from Zavreen. I hope I'm saying that beautiful name correctly. And she says, my role in planetary healing, eco-spiritual work, and helping people reconnect with the natural world, guiding meditations, poetry, finding hope, looking up, connecting with trees, the birds, the sky, picking us out of the dirt, finding gold within, and healing on cellular level planting for the future, healing wounds, and healing gener seven generations backwards and forwards. And then Paulette from Kent State University says, my personal role in planetary healing is being support to other people in their healing journey, in a journey to consciousness, to awaking, and to become a restorer species. Thank you, Paulette. It's beautiful. And lastly, here I have with uh, Vanessa. And uh, Vanessa says, I feel most like myself in a place with a lot of trees where humans and wildlife thrive alongside each other. What most breaks my heart is when people heartlessly kill animals or destroy eco ecosystems just for the money. My role is to help people finding their way back to feeling one with all that, it, all that is. Wow, gorgeous, beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So we have some beautiful um, stories lined up for you. And I'm going to invite um, Debbie and Ani and Sarah to turn your videos on. And um, Kenya, it looks like we lost Juliana. We... Yes, yeah. I'll. Um... I'll see if I can reconnect with her. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so Ani and Debbie and Sarah are, are here to tell us stories from their perspective within the Global Sisterhood of Tree Sisters. And I'm so, so happy that they're here with us today. Um, and uh, Kenya, can you get us on gallery view so everyone can see the whole panel of us? Yeah. Hi. And um, so we're going to be introducing you to everyone. And, and when we do that, I, I would love to invite you to tell us where you are calling from in the world. Um, and well, maybe we'll change the order because we were going to speak with Juliana first. Um, so we'll just do that. And I wanna share, you know, everyone has been on this inner journey um, campaign with us for seven weeks now. And um, there, there's such a vast array of connection and um, familiarity with the Tree Sisters movement. Some of you have been here with us for years and others are just coming in freshly in the last couple of weeks. And um, so I really wanna share, and this may be uh, really well known to those of you who've been here with us for a long time, but I wanna share a little bit about what's special about this work for me personally. Um, I'm a real lover of trees. I have been my whole life. Um, I remember being a little girl and climbing in the trees and spending hours up there with a pillow and a camera. 
<laughs> and um, even as I became a young adult, trees remained among my best friends and I would sit with them and they would give me messages and guidance and solace. Um, and so it was very natural for me when a good friend asked me, well, what, what are you most passionate about the, in the world? Um, it very naturally arose from within trees, but I didn't know how to make that my life's work. I didn't know how to make a difference and it took me years to explore um, what, what I might be able to offer to the forests of the world. And I always held this vision in my heart the whole time of the world being covered in forests again as she once was to the level that she once was. And um, lo and behold, that vision and that, that consistent um, intention and exploration led me to Tree Sisters. And what I love so much about Tree Sisters is the combination of um, the inner and the outer. So looking at forest restoration from the perspective of starting with the roots of our relationship to the forest and um, how what we end up doing in our through our actions and how we treat the forest has its roots in, in our values and um, how much care and value we give to the ecosystems and living beings around us. So the fact that Tree Sisters is, is a global movement of people standing up and saying, yes, I value nature and I'm willing to do the inner work to, to transform on every level I possibly can and translate that out through my lifestyle, including um, putting my actions and, and my resources towards the trees. Um, that really personally moves me and gives me a great deal of hope for the future. Uh, so with that, I will, um, let's see. I think we should then start while we wait for Juliana to join us again. We uh, let's start with introducing Ani and Kenya. I will pass it over to you to to do that introduction. Mm, thank you. Yes, I am really excited to share with all of you a couple ways that you can get involved with Tree Sisters beyond just giving monthly or in addition to giving monthly. That's something that a lot of women ask us in the network. And the first way is by becoming a water carrier. And for those of you who don't know what that is, this is a name we've given to people in our network who fundraise in aid of Tree Sisters and help water the roots of this movement and the reforestation work that we're doing. And there are a few water carriers on the call I know, and this, this just happens in so many incredibly creative ways. And through the events that you host and the jewelry and art that you sell and percentages of your merchandise and book sales and all of your fundraising efforts, we're just so grateful. And uh, it's also a really beautiful community that's that has a support system through a Facebook group. So you can all talk to each other. And this is just one of the ways that we're building community in Tree Sisters. And so I am so excited to uh, to introduce Annie, who is a water carrier. Um, and she's also a grove tender. So I'll just say a little bit about grove tenders too. The Tree Sisters groves are women's circles and they're places where you can gather to take care of yourself, each other and the earth. And I think it's a really revolutionary way of doing activism work in the world because it really has two components. It's an in-breath, which is about filling yourself up, being nourished through sisterhood and connection with others and bringing your gifts and your creativity and your whole self. And then the out-breath, which is the action part. So really stepping into action around something you care really deeply about in the environment, whether it's planting trees or it's doing conservation work. I mean, the list is endless. And so these are just two of the ways that you can step into Tree Sisters and really deepen your relationship with this work. And uh, I'm, like I said, I'm so happy Annie's here to really give voice to it about her experience with that. So I'm gonna pass it over to you, Annie. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, my name is Ani Maliki and I have a jewelry business, I'm a jewelry designer. And I kind of came into three tree sisters in three ways all at once. So it was kind of a burst. 
Uh, the first was just personally, I became a tree sister, so I donate every month. Um, and I'm part of, I follow what's happening always online and through your femiversity and your Billion Trees campaign. And then the second was that I became a grove, a launched a grove in here in the Berkshires in Western Massachusetts. And I choreographed a dance piece uh, with Claire Dubois uh, voice as the soundtrack. And there were five dancers and three singers and we danced at Edith Wharton's estate it's called the Mount in Lenox, a very famous estate amidst a grove of trees. And it was really um, a, a sort of an homage to the trees and it was a exploration through movement of what Tree Sisters is all about. And uh, there is actually a video and somewhere on your website, I don't know where. <laughs> um, and that was very rewarding personally, it was artistically rewarding and it was a real surprise to me to be able to join my passion as artistic passions with my environmental passions and concern. Um, I never ever thought that would blend would happen. So it was just kind of came out of left field and it really spoke to Tree Sisters message of bringing your personal gifts to the work. Um, and I, I think now that I'm 52, I think that that is something that I'm finally accepting and not forcing myself to be someone I'm not, but to sort of say, okay, I am not an accountant, but I can choreograph. So how can I make that work for, for this cause? And the third way was to, um, wait, I don't know. Oh, look what just happened. I just pulled up a video from your beautiful event, or sorry, a, a photograph. Yeah. Yes, yes, oh, that's really nice. That was at the end of the event and everybody came and we had a circle in the grove of trees, which was gorgeous. I mean, it just was a spectacular day as well, October 1st. So, yeah. Um, and then the third way is through my business. Um, we partnered with Tree Sisters and became water carriers. And so for every purchase that is made through our business, three, we donate $1, which equates to three trees about three trees uh, being planted. So that up till now, for between October 15th and today, it's over 700 trees. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That's my website. Um, and you can see the jewelry and it's, my jewelry is all nature inspired. It's all, all the forms and the shapes. I have, I have collections that are all themed upon na the natural world, canyon, river, forest, celestial seascape um, I, and so it really aligns well with my artistic vision and I think that I've noticed in my conversations with my customers that it it, it enlivens the the process the transactional nature of business it, it gives a soulful dimension as well as a purposeful it's purchasing with purpose and in, in the really true sense of the word so um, and I've had some wonderful interactions with people and they say, well, well, what's Tree Sister? What? Tell me, you know? So it's also an opportunity to really expand, you know, spread the word about Tree Sisters and over a ring or a pair of earrings. So it's kind of playful, but also significant and, and profound and important. So, and I'm very grateful to Tree Sisters and to the inner work as well it feels very important that that be a part of this conversation. Mm. Ani, I want, I want to ask you, um, so Ani and I had the great pleasure of being in person together at an event that we did um, in New England. Was it just a week ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it feels like much longer. It was a week ago. And Ani shared some of her story at that event with us as well. And Ani, I was really touched um, when you shared how you explored, you wanted to give back through your jewelry business for years and you explored doing it through different avenues um, and what that process was like until you found Tree Sisters. Yeah, so I started, I knew I wanted to do something um, with the forest. Um, and so I started with Arbor Day Foundation, which is this wonderful organization and it's quite large, I think. And we were doing the same thing. We were donating a dollar per purchase and it was fine. 
um, we didn't really have a relationship with the organization. It was sort of one way. Um, and so from, from my point of view, I mean, I really feel that we all have to have our own souls nourished as when we give, it has to somehow we have to have a feeling of reciprocation and connectedness. It's really coming from that sense of connection. So I didn't really have that, um, even though it was great. And then I discovered this beautiful tea called Runa tea, which is made from the Wayasa leaf grown in Ecuador. And this leaf is grown under the canopy of the rainforest and it's grown by the indigenous people there. And so this company is rather brilliant because it, it sort of triangulates ecological protection with health because this is a highly has a lot of antioxidants in it, this tea, and with social, social sustainability as well, providing a market for this tea. So I fell in love with this business model and I, I switched over to them. And that was for the second year. And that was also rewarding, but it was more that I loved what they were doing, but it didn't have any connection to jewelry, obviously. <laughs> there was no women involved. There was no, um, you know, it was kind of in Ecuador specifically, it wasn't sort of a, a global movement about forest reforestation. Um, and I didn't know how to convey it to my customers. It was a big mouthful to try and get all that across. And so when I discovered Tree Sisters, it was really a kind of a perfect alignment. I just felt it, the simplicity and clarity of, you know, the sisterhood and working with women and the, the inner work. And I, I also realized at that moment that jewelry, um, I kind of, transcended some of my limited beliefs about jewelry because I had sort of I mean I, I love jewelry but I had sort of said oh it's just sort of material stuff more more stuff that we don't need and then I started to really think well no, actually it's it's part of what we're discussing in Tree Sisters of going inwards and going outwards the in-breath the out-breath and the jewelry is like an intermediary between the self and how we present ourselves to each other in the world. And when we choose something, if it's clothing or a hairstyle or a piece of jewelry, we're actually kind of connecting the two and connecting with ourselves um, in the true sense of jewelry, not sort of bling bling jewelry. So that's, that's how I came to Tree Sisters. <laughs> it's so beautiful to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Kenya, I'm going to pass it back over to you to um, introduce Juliana. Oh, perfect. I'm so happy that you're back with us, Julianne. Ah, well, I first of all just want to say that all of our projects are extraordinary in the way that they really support and lift up women. and. Um, and I'm so grateful that we're here in this circle. And I really want to just for a minute, just expand our awareness to the people who are doing the planting because they're really growing the roots of this movement on the really practical level. And so I really wanna honor all of the women and, and men as well who are doing the tree planting. And I wanna introduce you to Julianne who is, um, on the ground at our project in Mount Kenya, doing amazing work. I had the pleasure of visiting Mount Kenya earlier this year and making a film about it, which, um, which some of you may have seen. And uh, really, I was most struck when I was there by the power of the women just making an impact on such an incredibly joyful level. Everything that was done um, and the project had such a level of joy. I, I really can't describe it. There was singing and dancing while we were planting and, uh, and there was a real power to it that I really can't quite describe. So I think it's probably best for me just to pass to Julianne and let her um, give her own perspective of it. And Julianne, I'd love for you to talk about the project uh, through the lens of the way that the women are coming together to really make this happen. And make sure I'll, I'll unmute you, Julianne. There we go. Uh, let's see here. There we go. I think we should be able to hear you now, Julianne. Hi, everyone. Hello. 
Yes, we can hear you, Julianne. <laughs> so uh, I got lost on the way, yeah? Maybe I wanted you to, to repeat to repeat again eh, what you are talking about. Eh? Yes, of course. You have told me to introduce about. <laughs> yes, of course. And Julianne, we can see you a little bit, but can I'll you- I'll be glad if you can repeat again. Mm. Can you tilt your screen down just a little bit for us so we can see your face a little bit better? That would be really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Uh, so the question, Julianne, was uh, I just would love for you to talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in Kenya with the other women, how how all of you coming together is really making uh, the tree planting happen. Okay, as you have told, you have been told, my name is Juliana. I'm the coordinator of the Mount Kenya Environmental Conservation. I work with several groups, community-based organizations, and the community groups, eh, register the several groups, eh, we mobilize them together to grow, to raise seedling of indigenous trees, eh, to plant in the forest. Eh. And in fact, we started it in, in the year 2015. Eh. This is the third year of the implementation. Eh. And I can see the women are the, taking the lead eh, in tree planting. And in fact, the majority of the group members, we work with them, eh, they are women. The majority of the members, they are women. So, so it shows that women are taking the lead eh, in the reforestation part. Because eh? uh, like now, even when we are planting trees, most of the activities, they are taken by the women. Eh? Yeah, they are really contributing a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you maybe uh, talk a little bit about a bit a bit about too why it's so important for the women? Because um, I noticed when I was in Kenya that and this is quite different than a lot of uh, Western cultures, women are still very reliant on the forest. And so maybe you could talk a little bit about why um, planting trees is helping them get out of poverty and all those other beautiful things that are happening. Yeah, as you have heard, women are they taking the reader. As like in Kenya, let, let's talk about the, the reality in Kenya, women, they all the respons all the responsibilities. Eh? especially maybe the firewood folder. So they have obvious to take part in tree planting because still they need firewood to cook. Eh? So I, I, I feel women, they, they take part in tree planting because maybe like now you, you never find a, woman, a man going to, to look for firewood in the forest. Because now women, they are, they are the ones, they owe those responsibilities, even the fodder. So they have to take part in tree planting. Eh? Maybe if they plant trees in their farms, eh, they will benefit with firewood as well. At, at least they avoid the areas of the forest. Because like now women, they travel a lot of distance from the reserve to the forest to collect firewood. If they can manage to plant trees in their farms, eh, I think that would be better. So that's why they are taking it. They have that passion eh, of planting trees on their farms because eh, they see the benefit of it. Yes. Yeah, I was amazed when I was in Kenya that uh, women would um, carry just, you know, so much wood on their backs from the forest to their homes. And, uh, and so the work that we're doing there, like Julianne was just saying, is women are planting trees on their farms and they're also planting them in the forest so that they don't have to walk so far carrying the heavy wood. They can get what they need for their families, for their everyday lives off of their farm. And then the forest is left alone. And so, you know, there's a reforestation of the forest happening and uh, trees going into the ground on their farms to help the women as well. And, um, and just a, a, one last question, Julianne, for you. Could you maybe just talk a little bit about the benefits of the tree planting in terms of uh, how, how women are getting paid for the, the saplings and, and that work, how it's helping them okay. to get out of poverty? Mm -hmm. On terms of tree planting, we, women, the, the, the groups, they raise the, the seedlings, yeah? They are the ones who are responsible for doing all those activities in the nursery, so they over the reaper. So in terms of, we rewind them through the patches of seedlings, yeah? then so that they may participate in tree planting. So we have to, we, we, we support them yeah, to lay those seedlings Obvious because they are they are contributing their reaper to the to and raising those seedlings. So that's why we, we reward them through the purchase of seedling. Then they, they take part well in tree planting. Eh? 
as the reward as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And I heard a lot of women talk about how the money they get from planting this, the seedlings and helping to look after the trees in the forest, help them to educate their children and, and pay their bills. And a lot of the women too, um, at least this is what I heard there, will share the, the wages between them for anyone who's really struggling uh, financially. So it's a real sisterhood. It's, it's just so beautiful. Cash, yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like now when we purchase seedlings from them, they get a little bit of the income, yeah? They, they, so far, most of the groups have started the small enterprise. Eh? It's like the small microfinance among themselves. Eh? They can save. Then they, they each, each and every member can acquire a room. Eh? Maybe every every month they have to, 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 to contribute to ones that income they have saved. Then a member, if you want a loan, if you are a member of the group, you want a room from that group, you can acquire a loan and pay back with maybe a little in, in interest there. Yeah? I think that, that one is building them, yeah, because the, through the purchase of children, it's really improving their, their lives, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Julianne, for being with us from Kenya and for, I'm so glad you rejoined us despite the spotty internet. So thank you so, so much. I'll hand it back to you, Amrita. I'm not sure who's next. Amrita, you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, Kenya. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Sophie to introduce uh, the work of our volunteer team and our pollinator grove and our special guest, Sarah. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Annie and um, Julianne for sharing your stories. It, it makes our work so real <laughs> for me. <laughs> it's such a beautiful experience. So, wow, what, I'm, I'm so excited to invite Sarah here into this circle and to, um, yeah, to share a little bit about the women who are choosing to step into Tree Sisters as volunteers. You know, right from the beginning when Claire had this vision in her car crash um, tree sisters landed in her being as an invitation to all women to unleash their wild creativity their brilliance their love on behalf of the earth on behalf of the trees and um, what often happens when women encounter tree sisters is they say wow i'm really feeling this i'm hearing the call what can i do how can i take action and obviously one way is becoming a tree sister and becoming a water carrier. And another way is to come and uh, bring your time and your love and your passion to tree sisters as a volunteer. So Sarah is part of our Heartwood volunteer team, a group of, um, I think it's 23 women right now, who've over the past year have been contributing to tree sisters in so many different ways by doing important research projects, transcribing our calls, um, supporting with social media and promotion uh, and most recently we had a, a a huge influx of volunteers in our pollinator grove thank you so much to all the amazing pollinators who've helped this campaign to soar <laughs> yes Choo -choo. jingle jingle thank you so much uh, and sarah has contributed in so many ways and is also you know the the way i really want to honor you right now sarah is how you've stepped in as an elder and a wise woman in our circle holding the vision of tree sisters uh, with your circle of, of elders. So I'd love to, yeah, it's so important to me. It brings tears to my eyes. Ah, <sighs> yeah. So I'd love to hand over to you, Sarah, to share a bit about your experiences being a Heartwood volunteer and also um, why you're a tree sister. Thank you. Oh, I'm so honored and tickled and my heart is just pumping. I'm sure all of all of those of us sitting here today, our hearts are pumping for all the thousands of women who will are watching and here. So thank you, Sophie. <laughs> I love you all. Um, well, I came in through nature. I came in when Mary did a free class on the landscapes of the soul and wild women were being invited to experience nature and that was all I needed. And uh, I came in, um, dove right in. It's, this is my, my life, my story. So, um, gosh, in a quick moment, 
I got out of college in 1972 and I knew I wanted to live in nature. I had never even camped and I lived without electricity, without running water. I cut trees down, took the bark off, built a teepee, never had seen a teepee and um, let my little baby boy be uh, brought to the world. Now we built a structure when he was ready to be born at Christmas time. So nature has uh, called me for a long time, uh, the herbs, the plants, and I'm a, I'm a plant person, I'm realizing. Um, then the spiritual path and tree sisters, nature-based feminine leadership. So I want to sit here today for all these new women, these thousands of women who have found Tree Sisters, because I'm a, um, I'm an everyday normal woman. I live in the Midwest of the United States. I uh, am a sister, a circle person. I love people. I'm a connector. I built a community. Our communities now having our second generation, our children are having children. So if you want to cry, you can cry now for joy, for sisterhood, for love. I bring love. Uh, and Sophie, the spiritual aspect of Tree Sisters is really what nourishes me. The feminine, the mother, the love, our hearts are caring. And Claire has it. And every tree sister I've met has it. So all my sisters, Kathleen, Ruthie, who all are not here, who are here. So I am representing for all of you new women to come, come, come. <laughs> I, I am an enthusiast of life. And that's my gift. And I love people. And uh, I could go on for hours and hours. So my husband's an arborist. The trees uh, wrap themselves around me and I wrap myself around them. I'm looking out in my window at the trees. So, you know, I'm a wild soul woman and tree sisters are heart wood. <laughs> so I don't know what to say other than I invite any new women to, to come. I've done everything from transcribing to trying to monitor hot, volcanic, passionate, talks on Facebook to, <laughs> to um, loving, supporting. And now, and I told Sophie, as, as a woman who's, you know, in my late 60s and a grandma, I appreciated and I loved so much the feminine-based respect of holding space, of ceremony, of prayer, of just saying, I love you in my heart. I don't have a million dollars. I don't have a million hours, but you're in my heart, the trees and nature and all of the things that we love about the earth. So um, that's it. You know, that's it. There's a place for every single one of us. And uh, Tree Sisters is true, true feminine um, leadership. Everyone is really in a circle here. I feel that. So I told Sophie, I, I didn't want to, you know, stay with that high energy of you, you forties and thirty somethings. <laughs> and, and so I felt like I wanted to just hold some space as an elder and let you know the, the stillness inside that trunk, that tree that doesn't move. We've got the branches and the roots and the trunk the crown we talk about and the root flare, but all the parts of a tree. So there's room here for any woman, any woman that, and any man, my beautiful <laughs> husband and our beautiful men. So I just, um, I'm here to welcome anyone. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Wow. It's wonderful to feel your passion. <laughs> thank you so much. And it's so true. There is a place here for all of us. Absolutely. And um, I forgot to mention this earlier in the meditation, actually, you just made me think of it, Sarah, that the, the inner journey group, this Facebook group that you're talking about, this passionate, hot volcanic place, <laughs> which is so beautiful, um, is going to stay open for forever. <laughs> so it's your place to be, to connect as, uh, as the women who have taken this journey. And also the journey will continue with our full moon gatherings every month that Claire will be hosting. So thank you, Sarah. It's beautiful to have your voice here with us. And yeah, with that, I'll pass back to you, Amrita. Thank you so much. And I'm going to pass it on quickly to Jocelyn to introduce us all to <laughs> Debbie. Yes. 
Oh, beautiful. I'm so honored uh, to welcome in uh, dear Debbie, uh, Deb Hall, and she's calling in here from uh, Cambridge in the UK. And what really inspires me about Deb is that she has a beautiful love for willow trees. And uh, I've seen that uh, in her beautiful, her art and woven work. But also what's really special about Debbie um, is that she has brought her whole family into her work, including her young daughters. And so she's really, you know, sharing her love for trees and her work with, with the younger generations. And I think that's so valuable and important and something that we really care about at Tree Sisters. So I'm really, again, very honored to welcome you in Debbie to our circle. And uh, I would love for you to share a little bit about your uh, beautiful love for Willow and uh, your beauty making and speak a, a little bit about your, your gorgeous family. Well, thank you for such an amazing welcome. It's been so great to see everybody um, speaking about their passion here and uh, to be part of it. I'm so grateful to be part of the Tree Sisters Sisterhood. Um, and basically I've been a Tree Sister since 2012. Um, I first kind of, when first discovered Tree Sisters, it was something that really resonated with me. And um, yeah, I, really, I, I wanted to be sort of like a, a bigger part of it, I suppose, for a little while. Um, and uh, when it came to, is it, I was recently thinking about um, wanting to up my um, contribution financially to Tree Sisters rather than do that myself by increasing my own monthly donation I decided to um, sort of like a gift membership to my two daughters so um, one of them's 21 nearly 22 and the other one's 19 now and um, yeah, I thought it would be lovely for them to have the, um, oh, <laughs> pictures here, there's Polly walking through um, a bit of rainforest in Kenya. So we have actually been really fortunate enough to um, visit the rainforest. That's slightly thrown me, I've forgotten where I was going now. With that one. <laughs> no, but it's great, really great to, um, yeah, uh, to be able to share that with them. And so by giving them a membership, they then can be part of this amazing network and you know receive the contribute you know the emails and um you know get all that back from from you know the sisterhood here and so that they may go with it you know in any way which way they like but by gifting their the memberships they they have now they have got that connection and um i hope that they have sort of seen a lot of what I do, which is um, I, I make baskets, I grow my own willow, um, and I, uh, you know, I've, I've had this amazing experience through, through life, being, being able to grow the materials that I work with in my art. So I make baskets, I make sculpture, um, I also make living willow structures, so um, I grow the willow, cut it, plant it in the ground and then shape it into, you know, whatever I want to create. A lot of stuff for schools and nurseries so that kids can play, um, you know, amongst the, uh, the growing structures. So it's kind of like loads of trees. Um, and that kind of thing is, yes, it's sort of like, so they have grown up around me doing that. And I hope that that will, you know, they'll, they'll mm. see that go through. Um, and it gives balls back. I'm a little bit nervous here. You can probably tell I haven't done anything like this before. So yeah, so um, when I, so I've always loved trees. Always been something that I've loved to play. And when I was a kid, I played in the trees behind the houses. And you know, there's some somewhere I feel safe and you know mm. nurtured. That's, that's the place I go. I go to the woods if I want to nurture myself. And I fortunate enough to have an acre of woodland behind the back of my house um but it was really kind of like being a mother that um reconnected me back to nature I suppose in a big way um it's you know, so how amazing to be able to grow life inside you and then with that comes the responsibility of making sure that the earth is still a beautiful and nurturing place for the generations that follow and you know, hopefully by sort of 
gifting the girls with their membership, you know, they'll be able to carry it on in their own way and and contribute towards um, the, the Earth Stone like that for their kids and the generations that follow after that. So, and also, you know, they'll, they'll sort of hopefully see their part and their, their responsibility in, in carrying on and, and, you know, making sure that the, the earth survives, that we have a, you know, such a, you know, we do have such a beautiful place to live and that it continues mm -hmm. to be that beautiful. And it's, it is all of our jobs to kind of make sure that happens. Yeah. And, you know, when I was first asked to, to speak on this, it was kind of, I was, I was really quite surprised. I thought, oh, you know, what have I done? <laughs> you know, and I, I guess I've just done what I've always done, which is, mm -hmm you know, feed into the nature around me and pass it on to other, other people. So you know, I hope to continue doing that. And I hope to continue, mm -hmm. my, you know, my kids will continue to do that and their kids beyond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Thank very you. honored to have been asked wow. to join you. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Thank you so much, Debbie, for coming and, and yeah, for being, having the courage to get on um, and being able to inspire. And, and so that all, you know, these beautiful, people out there can can meet you know we can meet and connect to each other it's so it is really special and mm -hmm. beautiful so thank you so much for coming and yeah blessings to your daughters and and your family and yeah so you said I was in Cambridge I'm actually in Yorkshire today because I am at my mum's house and I have my older daughter with me here too wow. I, I did kind of think I might persuade them to come and say hi but <laughs> <laughs> three generations Not right now <laughs> It's so beautiful, beautiful, wonderful. Well, thank you, Debbie. And I think, Amrita, are we, how are we doing for our stories? Uh, well, we're right on time. And um, I actually have a little bit of a um, in the moment impulse. I hope you'll all <laughs> allow me and follow with me because we've heard such a beautiful kaleidoscope here of all the different lives we have and the different ways we're involved in this movement and each one so personal and yet with, with such a common thread and um, also the reason this impulse is coming up for me is because I'm really hungry to hear everyone's voices again <laughs> just one more time um, so I want to ask us to each share from our perspective um, an invitation for those who might be watching us who um, what, what would you say to those watching as a way of inviting and welcoming them to join us in this global circle of loving and caring for the trees? So I'm going to, let's do this with a, a talking stick style. I'm going to, we're going to imagine a virtual talking piece and I'm going to put it in the center of the circle for someone to pick it up. And then once you've done so, please pass it to one other woman until we've made it through everyone. I'll pick it up. <laughs> um, yeah, my invitation comes from something I shared in the meditation, which is this knowing that we all have that our bodies are part of the body of the earth. There's no separation. And so when I give my 50 pounds every month to, to plant trees, I know I'm tending to my own body. I know I'm tending to the body of the earth. I know I'm tending to all of us. And it makes my heart sing every month. Ah, oh, yeah. And I'll pass the talking stick to Sarah. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Amrita, for your inspiration. I would like to invite all the women coming and sitting and watching to know that you matter. You matter. In, in all of your imperfection, all of your insecurity, all of your everything and all of your strength and all of your beauty and all of your gifts. So you matter and we need you. You're needed too come. I will pass 
this beautiful imaginary talking stick to mm, mm, Annie. Unmute, yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, let's see. I think that, um, well, I mean, I guess I will acknowledge the events of the moment nationally, politically. We don't need to go into any of them, but they are very much in all of our awareness. And uh, this is a big moment for women. And it is sort of the moment for women, because if we don't shift towards the feminine and right now, it's going to be too late. So the teachings that I have found through, um, I mean, Claire is spearheading them, but it is really so layered. I, I don't know, I, I, in exploring the Tree Sisters website, I have found um, a real paradigm shift that takes quite a bit of work to kind of deprogram ourselves from the patriarchy. And that is obviously requires the circle of women. Um, Claire clearly launched it with her crash and her vision, but I mean, it really feels like a movement and it's rippling down through our culture and it needs the masses to do that. And it feels like the trees are more women. I mean, it's the, the tree sisters that are on this organization and the trees that are planted. So it's a big collective um, in that paradigm shift. So I feel that the invitation is also for women to really take ourselves seriously right now, really seriously um, to come forward. And this is just a wonderful platform to do it in. There's so many out there now, but this is really a, a very nourishing one. So I'll hand it over to Kenya. This is a fun game. <laughs> ah. I, I really feel that becoming a tree sister is a way of life. And I don't mean that to sound too culty, <laughs> but more so to, to speak to this movement that we're talking about, that there's a greater story happening on the planet right now that's threading together the women and the, the people who really connect with their divine feminine know that it's time for us to step into that more fully for the survival of our planet and the survival of humanity and the survival of all of our beautiful animal species. And the thing that I love about Tree Sisters is that this comes from a place of love. And I catch myself going into that fear and it's even happened just a few times while some of you were talking, I felt myself go there and immediately I just relaxed into the circle and knew that what we're standing for is, is really coming from this, from a place of love. Our love for the forest, our love for each other, our, our caring nature um, to really let ourselves feel and to really care and not to be numb and to really let our love th flow through us in a way that means giving back to trees every month for something tangible to actually manifest in the world. And that monthly donation being like a heartbeat that continuously feeds our ecology and, and in turn feeds us. I think women and the earth are healing together. And this is such a beautiful introduction of the two. And I could keep talking, but I will, <laughs> I'll just say that I, I am such a, I feel so strongly that this is a real movement of love that's happening and that's not something that's corny, it's something that's real. And uh, with that, I will pass to Julianne. Thanks for the invitation. Eh? I am very glad to be part and the bus of the three sisters representing Kenya. You know, if you don't have the passion for the environment, you cannot participate in this. Eh? So I got the passion when I was young, eh? when I was a small kid, because eh? I grew up in a village next to the forest. Eh? In fact, we could go to the forest to harvest firewood, to graze cows. So the passion developed there. Then I grew up, I saw that there was the need. Eh? There was a need because if I look back, what was really happening on the ground, eh? like now the deforestation was still happening that time, I, I could see the charcoal burning activities taking place. 
the cutting down trees anyhow no one who cares eh? so you find within a span of years you find trees are decreasing very fast eh? and almost everyone is talking about the climate change like in kenya then now we are talking about things have changed eh? and things have changed because like now we are we are supp it's supposed to be raining it's not raining at all everyone is wondering what, what happened eh? so everyone is talking about the group of climate change eh? cool. so that passion eh? that passion for the environment really motivates a lot because if i've no that passion i cannot motivate other people to participate in tree planting yeah uh, i would like to invite all women eh? watching everywhere eh? to take part eh? to have that passion to put it on their on their heart eh? to have it on your heart to have that passion that you can do this eh? if we abandon our mother nature we will take part of, we will take part in restoring it so we have to to conserve our mother nature through tree planting so i invite everyone to have that passion and contribute a lot to the nature through tree, through tree planting yeah yeah thanks who are you passing to julianne <laughs> oh my <laughs> Who has been left having not said anything? <laughs> we have uh, Debbie left and we have Amrita left. Anita, is it uh, Anita? Thank you, Juliana. I'll pass to Anita. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm so touched by hearing, by hearing what all of you have shared. Um, and exactly as you were just saying, Juliana, it's the, the passion. Um, I have such a passion for nature. Um, I am nature. Nature is me. There's no difference. And um, every day I look for more I can give and I discover I have more to give. And every day I wake up and I want to give more. I want I want to grow in my ability to give. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm giving as her because I'm just surrendering into um, being her and through loving her and taking care of her and giving to her. And um, on a very practical level, um, you know, <laughs> recently uh, my mom uh, my my family we stopped to giving each other presents for Christmas um, years ago. You know they used to give us Christmas presents when we were children, but uh, since we're adults, they don't. And but recently, my mom phoned me and she said, "Well, we're giving a Christmas present to your sister this year just because. So we thought we should give you something too. What do you want?" And I've been thinking about it ever since she asked me, and I thought. The only thing I want is trees. I just want more trees planted. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to tell her back is like, mom, just, just plant some trees for me. <laughs> um, and um, right now we have a really amazing opportunity um, because one of our um, one of our supporters has given a gift to be able to match what everyone gives this month, um, up to $10,000 US. So um, everything that you give to the trees this month is doubled. So um, that's even more of a reason why I want to say, well, mom, like use that money to plant the trees because this month we'll plant twice as many. Um, yeah, so um, that, is, that is my heart's way of expressing, expressing an invitation to to join us in funding um, trees every month because we still, yeah, we have a lot of catching up to do from what we've lost. Yeah. And I will pass it to Debbie, which is also my mom's name, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of mums and birthdays, it was recently, it's my 50th birthday in September. And yeah, you know, I thought I've, I've, you know, over the 
years I've accumulated enough stuff so I, I asked people that I had a big party and I asked people to, to give money to Tree Sisters <laughs> so I hope I hope plenty of people did <laughs> and if they didn't and if you're watching you now have the opportunity to have it doubled this month <laughs> I guess what I would say to people is uh, you know um, well firstly become a tree sister this is kind of like is it not I for me all I can see is a win-win because you have um, you know when I first joined I, I did it because I wanted to give back but I've received so much from being part of this network for I don't know since 2012 I think um, in terms of the, the meditations and the connections with people and feeling part of something feeling like you're making a difference um, so when I actually decided to up my contribution and do it through my daughters I actually because it's it feels such a it's such a relationship with three sisters I know and Annie spoke to that as well um, uh, it's it kind of I, I actually cancelled some other contribu contributions to other charities so I thought well lots of people give things to Oxfam and it's a very non-personal thing and it feels like it just makes such a difference so I'd say go for it <laughs> that's my <laughs> main thing I would say to other people but also give what you um what you what you feel you can offer because sort of like I I'm, I'm hoping that at uh, some point soon, when I'm, I'm coming back to teaching, I'm going to I'm also going to give a contribution um, of any of my workshop fees to Tree Sisters. And through that, people will say, you know, and what's all this about? And then so you tell them and it goes on like that. And also, you never know who you might inspire to. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I, I had no idea someone would ask me and having just had a, a brief email conversation with someone about uh, having you know, gifted my daughter's uh, donation. I just thought, well, of course, you know, that's that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, and also with doing workshops, teaching my willow and stuff like that, you know, you do get feedback sometimes years down the line from um, people that said, oh, yeah, and now I'm 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 a full-time basket maker. And I first did a work workshop, you know, eight years ago at a festival with you or something like that and you just don't have any idea how much difference you can make so you may think I am just you know normal old me with my passions my kind of like what I like to do in life and so what I would say is take what you like to do with your life and you know do something good with it and share it. <laughs> And is that has Jocelyn said anything yet? Oh. Shall I pass the stick <laughs> on to <me>. Jocelyn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie. I'm going to close off this beautiful round and say simply that I'm feeling very deeply that my wish for everyone uh, is to, you know, listen to their hearts and really you know, ask themselves, has something in what we've spoken to today inspired them uh, to move forward with an action, whether it's giving to trees every month, whether it's making beauty, whether it's speaking to a, a, someone about uh, the work of Tree Sisters or other beautiful, you know, nature-based learnings to, to, have the, to have the courage to take that step and, and see what happens, to just give it a try. Um, and see, and I, and I think you might surprise yourself uh, with what you find. And uh, also I wanted to say that we're all here for you. So if anyone wants to, to reach out to us, um, we're all the first, first name at treesisters.org in terms of our emails. So please feel free to reach out to Sophie, Kenya, um, Amrita or I, Jocelyn. We're happy to speak to you, have a conversation. And uh, I think um, also if anyone wishes to, uh, to donate, we do have our billiontrees.me uh, website and there's a donate page that's pretty accessible there. Uh, please feel free to give in any way that you feel called to. And we really appreciate that. Thank you. There's also, a, if you're watching live on the, on the closing circle page, there's also a, a button just underneath the video that says, yes, I wanna donate. Perfect. And I want to share, we mentioned um, two videos while we were speaking today. We mentioned the video from 
Kenya's trip to Kenya. And I believe that Juliana's in that video, right? Yes, I remember. <laughs> I remember you. Um, and uh, we also mentioned Ani's beautiful video of the choreographed dance and song and poetry from the Berkshires um, that was done October 1st. And so uh, we will make sure to include links to those videos in the next email we send to you so you can look deeper. Thank you all so much for being here. I wish I could turn on the video of everyone who's watching. Oh.